In this video, I'll discuss finite state transducers. I'll provide some background intuition, introduce their formal definition, and describe the differences between deterministic and non-deterministic finite state transducers. Then, I'll work through a case example in the context of a common NLP application, morphological parsing. Finite state transducers are basically finite state automata that describe mappings between two sequences of items. You can convert finite state automata to finite state transducers by labeling each transition with two items instead of one, an input item and an output item. Here's an example of what that looks like using the same general structure that we used for finite state automata. For each transition, the input is shown to the left of the colon and the output is shown to the right. The formal definition for finite state transducers looks pretty similar to the one for finite state automata. We still have a set of states Q, a start state Q0, and final states F and Q, and a transition function delta. However, there are also a few changes. Instead of a single alphabet with FSTs, we have an input alphabet sigma and an output alphabet capital delta. We also have an output function, lowercase sigma, that returns the set of possible outputs for each state and input. FSTs are compositional, just like FSAs. So you can join two FSTs together, such that the input going into FST number one can be directly mapped to the output going out of FST number two. They can also be inverted, so that the output is mapped to the input instead. Also, just like FSAs, FSTs can be deterministic or non-deterministic, so one input can be transformed into many possible outputs. However, unlike FSAs, you cannot convert all non-deterministic FSTs to deterministic FSTs. As a terminology note, sometimes you'll hear FSTs for which a given input has at most one transition out of the state, referred to as sequential transducers. Here are some examples of non-deterministic FSTs and sequential transducers to illustrate that point. In the non-deterministic FST, you can see, for example, that a B coming out of Q0 could be mapped to either an A or a B as its output. In the sequential transducer, on the other hand, there's only one possible output mapping for a B coming out of Q0. One classic use case for finite state transducers is morphological parsing. Morphology is the study of morphemes, which are the small, meaningful units that make up words. Some examples of morphemes are stems, which are the core units of words, for example, tweet and tweeting, and affixes, which are the little bits and pieces that you add on to stems to provide additional information. Morphological parsing is then the task of automatically recognizing which morphemes are present in a word and then building structured representations of those morphemes. Morphological parsing is necessary for a variety of reasons in language understanding tasks. One way it can be really useful is handling new words. For example, if you are Instagramming a picture of a random salad or something, which I have no judgment about, by the way, I might ask you, why are you Instagramming that? you'd be able to easily recognize that I meant posting something on Instagram. But since that's a term that probably isn't present in existing corpora that would have been used to train language understanding systems, those systems probably wouldn't have built-in representations of the word. If they have morphological parsers, they would hopefully be able to break apart the word into its constituent morphemes, look up Instagram if it wasn't included in their knowledge base, and then infer that by adding ing to it, you were performing the action of posting on Instagram. Morphological parsing can also be really useful for handling morphologically complex languages like Tagalog or Ojibwe or Turkish. 
there's apparently a Turkish word that I'm showing on this slide but do not know how to pronounce and I couldn't find a pronunciation guide that can be broken down into all of the constituent morphemes that I've listed here. So I looked it up and it means behaving as if you are among those whom we could not civilize. So with a word like this, it'd be really convenient to have a high quality morphological parser to handle it rather than attempting to just tackle it all in one block. So then if we were to build a finite state morphological parser, we would basically want it to do something like this. We'd want to take surface text as input and produce a morphological parse as output using a bunch of specific grammatical terms that we don't need to cover quite yet. Our morphological lexicon could maybe be represented something like this. So this shows that, for example, a past tense ED can't occur before a regular verb stem, at least in English. So with that information in mind, we could build a finite state morphological parser that looks like this. Now note that this is a really simple version of a morphological parser for a very tiny vocabulary. So in reality, your parser would be much more complex, but at the end of the day, it'd be doing the same thing as what you see here. Basically, we're recognizing that the stems of these words are nouns, and we're deciding what types of nouns they are. And then depending on some internal mechanism, we're deciding what kinds of affixes are attached to those nouns. Zooming in even further to this process, the inner mechanics of those sort of broad nodes might look like something closer to this. So to produce the morphological parse for foxes, we could just start at the first character of the word and follow the transitions accordingly. Right here, we reach an epsilon transition. So remember, that allows us to advance to the next state without moving forward in our sequence. And then to transition to the next state from here, we could have regular expressions checking for an ES or just S to indicate that a word is plural, or nothing to indicate that a word is singular. So we ultimately end up with the morphological parts that you see here. So in summary, finite state transducers are just finite state automata that describe mappings between two sets. One difference between the two is that although non-deterministic FSAs can be converted to deterministic versions, the same does not hold true for non-deterministic FSTs. Finite state transducers can be useful for a wide range of natural language processing tasks, including morphological parsing, as you saw in this video.